All right, let's turn to Iowa. It could not have gone better for Donald Trump. We will play some clips. Maybe we'll even play his speech, although his speech, the most interesting thing about Donald Trump's speech was that he was as calm and as gracious as you will see Donald Trump. And um, clearly aware of, like, the results last night were a clear indication to him, and I think uh, Weigel will support this, he is now basically running in the general election. Um, and he is able to make this pivot just the other day. He said the, the 2020 election was actually real or whatever it was. 65% of voters going into Iowa, these are all Republicans, low turnout. We'll talk more about what Weigel, but 65% of them did not think that Joe Biden won the 2020 election. Take that uh, for how you will. Diversity of thought. But let's look at uh, some of the grand predictions that have fallen short. Um, let's tune into uh, Dave Rubin, <laughs> who the amazing thing about Dave Rubin is um, I don't think there's ever been a time where he's predicted anything and wasn't 180 degrees wrong. Look. I am still hopeful for the presidential election, as I have said, and I know no, you know, no one else in conventional wisdom is saying it. I don't know why Kim Reynolds, a super popular governor of Iowa, decided to throw in with a guy that we're supposed to believe is 50 points down, who just went to all 99 counties and everything else in Iowa. I think Iowa is going to surprise people. I really do. And uh, he, of course, is talking about his, uh, his he, he cannot let go of his Ron DeSantis fandom because, I mean, he literally moved down there because he thought he had an in with DeSantis and he thought this was going to be great. Now, DeSantis did come in second place, which is actually uh, almost better than some people expected because Haley meant him, uh, was really growing. But what DeSantis coming in second place does is it basically ensures that Donald Trump will be the nominee going from like 92% assuredness to like 99% assuredness. But here is a uh, very nice uh, young man in Iowa who is recognizing Ron DeSantis's work uh, in Iowa just the other day. What? Nothing's going to stop us. Uh, real quick, before we get started, thank you, everyone. Governor DeSantis, I want to present to you this participation trophy. <laughs> now, probably not going to win the election, right? But we're proud of you for trying. There you go. Trophy, sorry, oh, buddy. I mean, sorry, buddy. Sorry. He's special, right, and he's unique, ahead. and he's our little snowflake. <laughs> here you go. Here you go. Here you I want love how the security comes and pulls him away. That, of course, is Dobrin from the uh, good liars but you know if you wanted to w wonder like you know why why didn't why didn't desantis ever catch on you can see the seething anger that that guy has and just the complete lack of sense of humor and he literally grabs his wife and sticks her in between uh davram and himself we usually put that put that back up i mean it really is sort of fascinating it's sort of like um he's both ill-tempered uh, awkward socially and seems to be terrified. Like if you watch, he says, I don't need a, uh, uh, I don't need a thing. Oh, oh, she steps in to protect him. That's what it is. She's going to defend him. Yeah. There, look at that. Look at that. He, she stands in there. He hides behind her. And then she's like a uh, security. Hello. Um, that is impressive. I don't do a participatory, uh, <laughs> what a big boy yeah he really showed that guy um but uh, there it is ron desantis um coming in second we'll talk more about this with weigel but again the only possible threat to donald trump now of course i'm not discounting the idea that um well i don't think he's gonna go to prison but he could i mean health is uh, one one never knows um but the only possible threat to Donald Trump would have been if there was a single candidate that he was running against and uh, through the first couple of, of primaries. Like if um, Nikki Haley could have cleared the field 
is starting in Iowa, but DeSantis is expecting to lose in New Hampshire. Everybody's expecting him to lose. So they're going to go and, and then South Carolina is Haley's home state. So that he gets a pass. So they may just jump ahead and play for um, uh, the subsequent primaries in uh, South Carolina. But I don't want to steal uh, Dave Weigel's thunder. We'll talk to him about that in a moment. Um, but the idea that DeSantis and Haley will split the vote means that there's absolutely no chance. Now, if you look at the numbers, as it were, in Iowa, and again, their turnout was way down, and a big part of that was because the weather was horrible. But if you look at their numbers, Trump won 51%. If Vivek and Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis, all uh, you add up all of their votes, and not a single person defects to Trump if their candidate drops, uh, drops out, and they all go to one of those three, they still don't win. And Republican primaries are um, more so than Democratic ones, winner take all. So keep that in mind. If you were, had any uh, hope for something different, I am sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Sorry, Dave. Dave Weigel will be here in just a moment. I mean, Dave Rubin. Oh, Dave Rubin, yeah. <laughs> he really built his life around Ron DeSantis' <laughs> yeah. success. And yeah. now Ron DeSantis is going to be basically working as like some type <laughs> of like... Uh, you know, corporate PR guy or something, maybe, I don't know. Imagine Ron DeSantis like coming to Dave Rubin looking for a job, like, come on, put me on. I, there's no doubt in my mind that Dave Rubin's gonna go, Ron, maybe you should, like, I could hire you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey folks, we all agree that media has bias, but when political motives are pushed at the expense of everything else, well, then you're really obscuring the truth. Just look at the story on Kim Jong-un, urging women to have more children. On the left, most headlines are straightforward. A couple note Kim's tears or his chilling demand. Meanwhile, on the right, nearly every headline mentions Kim Jong-un crying. See, this level of insight is possible thanks to our sponsor, Ground News. It's a website and an app that's on a mission to give readers an easy and data-driven way to read the news. Every story comes with a quick visual breakdown of the political bias, the factuality, and the ownership of the sources. It's backed by ratings from three independent news monitoring organizations. This gives you an opportunity to become a better decipherer of the media. For instance, in the Kim Jong-un story, out of 92 reporting outlets, 19% lean left and 42% lean right. You can also see the ownership and the factuality information of the reporting outlets. Right now, Ground News is running a New Year's sale, offering my audience 30% off their Vantage plan, making it only about five bucks a month. This gives you unlimited access to all their features. Check it out. You're going to become a better consumer of the media. Go to ground.news majority. The link is down below.